All right, hello everyone. We are team 6.9 earthquake, named so because we were in the Price Center during that earthquake that hit back in the very beginning of the quarter. I am well aware of the fact it has been upgraded to 7.2 earthquake, but we decided to keep it. I'm Rachel Sala. I am an ICAM major, not a CS major. I w came into this class with the expectation of doing purely artwork, which I did. I did most models and most of the website. Had some help with both of those things. Also in our group is um, Johnny Lee. He's the way at the end. There he is. Hi, Johnny. Johnny was our, is our fearless team leader. He basically did everything, a little bit of everything, you know, game logic, graphics, more website stuff, a little bit of networking, a little bit of everything. It's also Tim Graham. Tim was our main graphics guy. He wrote a lot of the shaders and stuff, and I have to say he did a pretty excellent job. It's also Kadar Reddy. Kadar also helped me with art and also did a lot of game logic stuff, and he was kind of our jack of all trades as well. There's Frank Wu. He did physics. Nevin Godrio. He did a lot of the audio work. Yeah, Nevin. All right. Sylvain. He did the networking. He did a pretty good job with that. And we all kind of, in our own way, contributed to the game logic. I mean, not programming so much, but with the general discussion of how it should work and how it all should run. Our game is a territory control game, unlike a lot of the other ones in this class, where you play as a elemental that's battling for control over a newly formed planet. So the elemental forms you can take don't really affect gameplay that much. It's just what you look like and what color you can change objects. The main point is that you explore this map region where there's randomly generated objects. They're kind of like these weird primal primitive forms that you change to whatever color you are, you know, like nature's green, fire's red, air's pink, because we're feeling different, water's blue, I know most of those colors are terribly original because that's the way we are. <clears throat> the main gameplay feature is that you convert objects by shooting little spheres at them, these little projectiles. There's two kinds. There's kinds that are regular that will convert objects to whatever color you are. There's also another type that you can shoot at other players and will temporarily return them to your color and they'll, they'll run around spraying out your color and converting objects to yours so they're helping you so it is effective to attack other players and uh, there's also a very short area of effect a spell you can use it's not really a spell it's an ability and all these abilities are powered by you have an energy bar that recharges over time similar to pigeon pooping game that you saw earlier you also have a speed boost that drains your health bar very quickly not your health bar I'm sorry there is no health bar in this game. <laughs> you basically um, just have the energy, like I said, and if you use a speed boost, it will all drain your mana. mana. That's a good way of describing it. Energy bar, whatever you prefer. You also have a shield. There's two types of shields. There's one that will defend you against physical attacks, another one that will defend you against projectiles by other players. The physical attack is if you speed boost at someone really hard, you can knock them off the map. They'll fall and die and eventually respawn, but they'll have their energy bar completely drained. You basically win this game by, it's a timed game, and at the end, if you have the most points, points being the objects you've converted, if you have the most points, you win. And you lose points by either other players converting them to their color, or you falling off the map. You lose points that way as well. It's also an anti-gravity bomb that you can use to push other players off the map briefly, but it drains your health bar a significant amount. Not your health bar, I'm sorry. I keep saying that. Your mana bar a significant amount. All right, I believe that is everything for now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the graphics of the game, um, I've always liked tune shading, so I decided to implement in this game, and I think it really fits. Cartoony look, just. A lot of mayhem going on, people knocking each other off. It's all pretty silliness. Um, the tune shading, well, it's kind of like cell shading, so for the lighting, it's just like discrete shades, there's no smooth gradient. And uh, the black outlines is detected by looking for differences between depth or normals across the surrounding pixels. So it helps get like nice black outlines for the shape and for like defining edges within every model. Um, the colors, 
when they shoot things, like, um, it changes the, to their color depending on uh, how much control they have over it. So there's a little control gauge for each object. And so when they paint an enemy object, it decreases back to the neutral color and it increases to their own. So in the shading, it tries to get, it takes like their color and the neutral color and it sort of like puts a gradient between those to figure out what the final color should be output for the objects. And a similar thing is done for the sky as well. So the sky determines like who's winning and it, it just slowly changes over time. And so when people are constantly contesting to be determining who the winner, the sky is constantly changing color. It's just a smooth transition. Try to get rid of all the stuttering that happens in the sky. <laughs> it just got charged off. Spawning in random positions, make sure that nothing collides. <laughs> just pushing each other. Try using your shield. Yeah. And there's the guard, just makes them shorter and fatter. All of them. <laughs> Um, hey Frank, did you want to go and talk about like the game logic behind everything? I'll take a... Um, so in our game, all our objects that are generated, they're generated randomly. And so as, so every single time that you play this game, it'll, it'll create a different map for you to play on. Well. It's a set area, but all the objects that are generated for you to color, they're all, um, they're, all uh, they're generated each time. And also, the objects are placed in the world so that we make sure that they don't collide with uh, each other um, using our physics engine. Our physics engine is actually really simple. Um, it doesn't do anything really spectacular. And um, it just uses simple spheres to make sure that we don't uh, crash into each other, and we actually don't really emulate real f any sort of real physics. It's all um, it kind of just uh, we update positions based on our controls. Uh, we only have a speed. There's no sense of continuing forces that are applied to characters. It's really simplistic uh, because we didn't want to overcomplicate things. Um, made sure our game was very simple so it's there's no complicated controls to learn <clears throat> so um we had some balancing issues at the end of our uh, at the end of oh so this is the windscreen I guess the water guy won and want to start up a new game Um, so at the end of kind of the last week or so, um, we had to do some balancing issues, realized that some abilities were overpowered, um, some were not used at all, and we had to do some tweaking. Um, like we realized at um, probably a week ago that uh, the color changing feature to, to allow uh, you to convert one of the characters to your color was overpowered. Um, and we had to tone it down a little bit, or else you would you could dominate characters just by um, making them change to your own color and shoot your own uh, your color. We also had issues where uh, if we wanted characters to spawn, uh, they would if they spawn in a consistent area, you could just chain them to death and completely knock people off, and they would have no chance of doing anything at all. So right there, uh, uh, one of the characters was trying to push the air guy off, and he used the guard move to to stay in stationary so that he wouldn't be pushed away. <clears throat> so uh, as you can see on the right side, there's the mana bar. Every single move that's used uses up a little bit of the mana bar. Um, different moves use different amounts of the mana bar. Um, so this right now is the area attack that shoots in all directions. 
that uses up more of the mana because it's more powerful, but each individual shot that hits the objects converts less of it because there's each object has an amount, certain amount of conversion that you can convert to your own color. As you, uh, you will see that that it changes to different shades. Um, the regular shot it uses almost n no energy. Um, it's the normal attack that you use. And then there's also the color changing, or to convert a character to a, your color uses a different projectile, and the, that actually uses up uh, more of your energy because it's a powerful ability. And earlier, when uh, the character fell off the world, it drained all of the energy. Um, so another tactic is to actually hit someone off so they don't have energy, and then they have to wait. Um, also, the speed boost uses drains energy pretty fast. We realize it's a pretty powerful move, and maybe we want to show off the anti gravity bomb. Anti gravity bomb. So that's the anti gravity bomb. It was originally meant to be an all powerful attack that would knock all the enemies or all your opponents off the screen. Um, at this stage that we're at, it's turned out to be kind of a useless weapon. It's not really being used. Um, so it's one of the another balancing issues that we we ran into. We realized that um, some of the abilities didn't really get used. Some of the abilities are used quite a lot more than the other ones. <clears throat> So right now the, the game is running at a pretty good pace, um, but earlier on in the, uh, probably in the middle of the quarter when we started getting all the graphics integrated with the network, uh, there were issues with slowdown and we had to fix that. There are a lot of different errors that we realized that we had to fix. Um, part of it was the network was actually slowing down our clients and we had to make sure that we were doing e efficient um, just basic uh, data structure problems where efficiency came into play and also um, there's the issue of just having good coding practice uh, making sure that we were doing the right things uh, we also did a few frustum calling to allow, so we didn't have to draw every single object, and it was, we used a very simple system because we don't have any characters that are up in the air, that are um, high above your view, or characters that are down in valleys where you can't see them. Um, the map itself is really small, and none of the characters can jump around. They can only fall off the map.